Charity Doctors Without Borders says that hospitals in Gaza have been under relentless bombardment over the weekend. Fuel and food is in short supply, and in some cases, surgeons are operating under torchlight. Well, on Friday night, the Al Orda Hospital in northern Gaza was bombed. The situation is so desperate there. Doctors are performing operations without anaesthetic. The hospital's co-founder, Dr Mona El Farah, joins us now with her daughter, Besma. Look, I would normally say good morning, but I know that it's not a good morning for you and because you have had terrible news even within the last few hours. Yeah, but document. every morning is good. Good morning. Yeah, every morning is good keep... because you have to hold on to yes. hope. and let us continue holding us up to hope. Mm. Yeah. Dr Mona, you... Uh, we understood yesterday had lost, and this is just unimaginable, 43 members of your family. While you were staying overnight in, in the hotel, you found out that you had lost another cousin, Erdem. Yeah, that's right. How, I mean, every day you must fear that the, the tragedy has hit your family again. Yeah, every day I feel this and I feel not only about my family, which they are important to me, but I feel that I'm going to lose a friend, a co-worker, one of my patients, neighbours. And every day I wake up just going into the lists who was killed, who was injured. So this is um, my feeling through the last 37 days. Mm. What despite, is... despite that, it is not new for me. Mm. I have been there through 2000 and, uh, 2014 oh. attack, but uh, this time it is different. The scale is very large and what's happening is just, you can't imagine that mm. this is happening in this century and the world uh, uh, governments are supporting of that. And um, uh, I appreciate the people's movement. Uh, but the people should change the politics of the government mm. towards what's happening in my country and what's happening in the whole world. Of course, the government here defends Israel's right to defend itself and also asks that it is proportionate and that civilians are not targeted. Uh, yeah, this was obvious in the first uh, days of the attack. This is their political stand, but now I am. Uh, my concern is the thousands, uh, uh, 2.4 million mm. of my of population of Gaza. Uh, most of them are displaced now, and my concern is about the children. Whenever yes. when I have arrived here, and I was cuddling my uh, my lovely uh, granddaughter. Her name is uh, Sidna. I I feel happy. I'm cuddling here, but I couldn't isolate myself of the feeling of. Uh, all her age group in Gaza, mm. the kids um, who are suffering of very bad um, uh, conditions inside the displacement places and uh, who are deprived of every basic thing. And more, as a physician, uh, I feel so enraged to, because I expected that um, the spread of the disease is coming soon. I expected that the first... Uh, moments of the attack, and it is coming now. I, don't, I will not give you numbers because the numbers are changeable. Uh, but the last number I got from WHO that uh, at least 55,000 kids under the age of five uh, are suffering um, of um, different diseases, but mainly respiratory tract infections and gastroenteritis. Uh, some of, uh, and this, this 55,000 in one month, mm -hmm. which was October, but but um, last year, the same month, only 2,000. Can you tell us about your decision to, um, to, to flee? You um, were able to leave Gaza um, to Cairo in the first days after uh, the Hamas attack in, uh, in Israel. Yeah. Um, what was happening at that time for you? Um, how hard was that decision? Because obviously you um, left lots of people behind mm -hmm. and... Um, how did you feel about that at the time? Uh, it is the most difficult decision I had to take in my life. But my daughter, Sundus, uh, she was visiting with her brother and uh, she is uh, suffering of some sort of illnesses. And um, I stayed there three days, uh, but I had to decide because um, I expected well, what will happen and she ran out of her medicine. Mm. So it was the, the most difficult decision I took in my life because all the time, I was in Gaza with people in hospitals helping and doing my duty. Mm. Uh, I try not to regret it. I feel guilty sometimes. You feel you should be there. I should be there. But in the meantime, when I see my daughter and how uh, she panicked and uh, she relapsed, 
while we were in Cairo and the journey from Gaza mm. uh, to the Rafah crossing, it is about 40 kilometers. Mm. It was so hard and dangerous and the bomb bombing was around us while we were in the car and we could see um, fire coming from mm. every place and I was trying to be calm and to reassure her until we have reached the border. And, and do you want to go back? I want to go, wanted to go back, but uh, when we have arrived in Cairo, the border was closed. Besma, mm. your brother, Dr Mona, your son, uh, went out as well and he is still out there. I mean, you know, this is your family. How do you cope with what's happening? I mean, it's just another day in the office for Palestinians. I mean, we, we are fortunate enough to happen to be dual nationals and have the option to leave if we want to. There's two million people who have nowhere to go and don't, don't really want, don't at all want to leave their homes. Mm -hmm. They have no options. This has been going on for decades. And this kind of, um, this kind of treatment, the, the Israeli occupation has, has been going on for a very, very, a very, very long time. And people have been suffering siege over siege, assault over assault. And those are the bigger mm -hmm. things that people are going through, the Palestinians are going through that are being subjected, they're being subjected to by these Israeli um, forces. You say it's been going on for decades, and of course, there's a, you know, there's a hugely difficult history here. Mm. But what is happening now is because of what happened on October the 7th, the Hamas terror attack on Israel and 1,400 people murdered and more than mm -hmm. 200 hostages taken. What is happening now is uh, an extension of a very slow, systematic, unreported ethnic cleansing that has been happening since 1948. Things that, what is happening now didn't start on the 7th of October. It started in, in 1948, in May 1948. And it was happening very slowly. And what happened on the 7th of October mm -hmm. only escalated Israel, Israel's already established ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians. I mean, that's... I understand that that is your perspective. It's a very sensitive phrase to use. I mean, Israel is a state, a legitimate state, that has a right to defend itself and suffered a heinous course, yeah. terror attack. And nobody, nobody wants to see the scale of horror that is going on. So the word, the word defends itself is, is a, an oxymoron in itself. Israel is an occupying force in, in the Palestinian territories. Mm -hmm. So when you're an occupying force, you can't really defend yourself because you're the attacker. They're, they're an illegitimate of occupation. Of course, is, you know, Israel's answer to that would be it had withdrawn from Gaza. It, was, it never withdrew no, from Gaza. Okay. It's still occupying it. Dr. Mona. I'd like to add something to what my daughter has said, that um, I feel sorry for those lives. Mm. I feel sorry especially for the children, but children from Palestinian, chil Palestinian children and uh, Israeli children. Mm. And this is no excuse whatever to use this excessive power against uh, my people. Yeah. Uh, you know the numbers, I will not keep mentioning the number. No excuse for that, no excuse of hitting the hospitals, even if uh, they claim that Hamas are underneath the hospitals, because I'm not sure of this information mm -hmm. to provide you which, which I want, but according to the international law that all the countries has signed it after the Geneva Convention and et cetera, guarantee the safety of uh, hospitals mm -hmm. uh, in the time of war and uh, peace and war, uh, guarantee uh, schools, I guarantee the life of civilians, the women. You, I'm sure you have heard about... Uh, uh, first, I would emphasize the point, it is no excuse mm. to do all this mm. because of what happened. But I would like to talk about women as well. Yeah. We have 50,000 50, women, pregnant women at the moment. Uh, some of them are due soon, and this big problem because uh, yeah. I can operations imagine. were the done... Conditions, and no, the no conditions anesthesia. are, are, yeah. are intolerable and, and, and in some cases unsurvivable. Look, I, look we, we understand. And we understand please, the horror. Yes, that, but please allow me to take this... Yes, uh, do. Uh, ..this stand to appeal for my uh, co-friends uh, co and doc doctors and health workers in Britain and in the whole world to take a stand now, different than the London, uh, take stand now uh, uh, to, to be in solidarity with their, uh, with their uh, mates. In, in Palestine, because my colleagues in Palestine and co-workers are working and 
under horrendous mm. situations and you have been watching the news. I appeal to everybody. Mm. I appeal to everybody to think of all the children, including the Israeli children. They will not get their peace and security without peace and justice for Palestinian people. Dr. Mona, thank you very much indeed. And Besma, thank you both for joining us this morning.